hello everybody welcome to my channel you've reached episode number nine i'm wasting no time let's dive right in the name of this episode is a toxic triangle nova makes a sweet little card for tyler expressing her love for her dad and tyler and nova are preparing for a daddy daughter dance so leah is here with Aaliyah grace and she's talking to her about school and her friends at school asking if they have boyfriends and Aaliyah grace says yes and uh Aaliyah grace says she has a little boyfriend and i laughed and i laughed and laughed because i thought it was really really funny the way she said it she says i have a little i have a little boyfriend <laughs> so leah says to Aaliyah that she needs her to be able to come to her freely she doesn't want to feel like she's like on her like that but it's very important to have open communication of course leah calls corey lets him know hey your daughter has a boyfriend and surprisingly corey suggests that if the two of them want to go out on a date they have to be open to that Leah and Corey discuss that, again, open communication is definitely necessary. And Leah talks to Corey about the fact that she wants for the girls to visit with a gynecologist. She wanted to do it when they were 13. She thought they were too young, but now it's to that age where she feels that they are ready. Now with Macy, Jen, who is Ryan's mom, she calls to invite Macy to have lunch with her and Ryan's new girlfriend, Amanda. Macy hasn't had much one-on-one -on -one time with Amanda and just so happens that Amanda was in Macy's 16 and pregnant episode. Oh my God, what is that? <gasps> now, Amanda is not crispy clean i don't know why i wanted to say that i am so so sorry that was so corny but amanda also is a ryan um i really want to have high hopes for you when it comes to this young lady that you started dating i really don't know how good of an idea this is going to be for the both of you macy explains to taylor that she's willing to give Amanda a chance even though she has a sordid past. I've always wanted to use that word in a freaking review. Thank you. Anyway, um, and she's willing to give people a chance and not just judge them based on their past. And Taylor was letting her know, you know, Ryan has improved a lot over the past year. So they're both very hopeful as much as I can be as well. Amanda is here with Ryan. Ryan, you're looking good, Ryan. Anyway, She's saying how she really wants Macy to like her. Of course, she's nervous to meet her over lunch or whatever. She wants to make a good impression. She basically wants to gain everybody's trust. So Brianna's mom has been in a center for three weeks. Brianna can only talk to her once a week, but she says her mom sounds better each time. So Brianna's glad her mom is taking treatment seriously. Roxanne calls Brianna excited that she finished earlier than expected she's tired but she's proud and feels happy to be off of her medication brianna shares the news with her sister Brittany, and she says that roxanne sounded amazing brianna wants a therapy session though with their mom before she returns home and Brittany agrees mackenzie bought a whole chair gym with a friend She's excited about its grand opening in a few months. Mackenzie and Cassanio again go back to the fertility clinic to learn more about IVF. During this appointment, they discuss the IVF cycle calendar. Mackenzie mentions that birth control affects her insulin levels and previously it made her insulin skyrocket. The coordinator explains that they use birth control to balance the hormones for this IVF. Mackenzie is worried because she's experienced severe to the point of wanting to herself from hormones in the past. And although she's scared of the medication, she wants to proceed. So Leah is here with the twins who are now 14, as you know, and she talks to them and says, hey, guys, I think it's time for you to see a guy. And she explains that with all the boyfriend talk, it's important 
to, um, you know, start getting acclimated with GYN. And it's not only about boyfriends. It's also about, you know, women's health and staying up on your health. So Aaliyah asks what the appointment will involve. And Leah mentions learning about women's health, leaving out a major thing that happens at these exams. And hopefully they're not getting that yet. Leah asks if the girls feel embarrassed. And Aaliyah says she's only embarrassed when she's mentioning things in front of her friends. And the girls both agree and they don't mind going to this appointment. Tyler and Nova are preparing for the daddy daughter dance. Tyler talks about Carly's adoption, noting that it brings many questions. The what ifs sometimes thinking about it makes you happy. And sometimes thinking about it makes you sad. And Tyler wants to make sure that he shares all the special moments with his daughters because time really flies. So Tyler brings flowers for Nova and they go out to have lunch before the dance. So this was very sweet and it's good to see, um, you know, that we're not always drama, drama, drama on this doggone show. And there was a lot of sweet moments in this episode that I really, really appreciate. I love that these girls have an amazing father. Tyler and Nova are sitting here having lunch. And Nova, I didn't realize that you were only nine years old because little girl, you are so freaking smart. So she's sitting here and she's like, <laughs> she's talking to Tyler, right? And all of a sudden she says, why were you and mommy kissing at 14? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I really want to know the answer to that. And Tyler explains to Nova that they really liked each other and they actually met when they were 13. And Tyler says, so, you know, what are your boyfriend and girlfriends at your age doing nowadays? And Nova's like, um, they hug each other. They hang out. They act real clingy. Tyler says, so they don't kiss. And Nova says, ew, kiss, gross. And she assures Tyler if she ever had kissed a boy he would know because she would tell him and tyler trusts that nova will talk to him when she needs to so macy meets up for lunch with amanda ryan's girlfriend and jen ryan's mom she explains that she and ryan have worked over the past couple of years to improve their co-parenting relationship and thanks to therapy and alanon macy says that she's more open to meeting new people so macy's here and amanda actually was in her class in adult school sorry i didn't mention it but i'm mentioning it now golly so macy asks amanda how she ended up in the adult school amanda reveals that she was kicked out of school she was kicked out of public school due to of certain and legal trouble she was getting Amanda says that she's been so for almost two years, which began around the time her parent, her dad, passed away. Now, her mother was also an ass and her father died from cancer. So Macy tells Amanda that she should be proud of her sobriety. She believes in not judging people based on their past. And, you know, Amanda admits that she was nervous about meeting Macy but she realizes that Macy is open-minded. Jen admits to the entire table that initially she did not want Ryan involved with Amanda, who has a very similar background as far as... Okay, Macy felt the same way is what she says, but they are pretty much trying to be open-minded and hoping that everything works out. And Amanda was explaining that her and Ryan made an agreement that if either one of them falls back into that lifestyle, they will both end the relationship. So Brianna gets a message from Roxanne's therapist at the treatment center saying she'll call her right back. The therapist calls her and tells Brianna that her mom is not doing well in treatment. Roxanne refuses to do any of the freaking work, okay? And Rihanna's confused because she really thought everything was going well. This news is really stressing Brianna out. So the therapist explains that Roxanne hasn't participated in any group activities that day. And Brianna asks why. And the therapist says Roxanne is in a bad mood and she often wraps herself in a blanket outside. 
and this therapist and i'm really sorry i gotta go back and get her name because i keep saying this therapist but the therapist tells roxanne she told roxanne actually the therapist told roxanne she needs to engage in the program for it to work and she's not doing this if she's not gonna you know do the work then what is the point brianna realizes her mother has been lying about her progress Mackenzie says that trying to do IVF while opening a new gym is overwhelming. She's stressed about the medications and possible effect that it will have on her diabetes and her mental health. Cassanio reassures her that she won't face this alone. Mackenzie worries about how this treatment might affect her behavior and worries that when she's feeling a certain type of way that Cassanio might not be able to handle it because Josh wasn't able to handle it. Cassanio promises that he won't leave. He tries to encourage the positivity, positivity, be positive, be positive. Now, Mackenzie says that she loves Cassanio, but she wishes that he would just let her express her feelings. Now, Mackenzie says that she plans to consult with an in <laughs> I can't say this word again. <laughs> oh lord she plans to consult with an endocrinologist to ensure ivf is safe and this is the doctor that specializes in diabetes for those of you that don't know amongst other things obviously and she says that this is her best chance to have a baby with kisanio leah took the girls to the nothing invasive was done as i mentioned earlier they just had talks about girl things okay basically the girls said that it went well and that's pretty much it. After that phone call with Roxanne's therapist, Brianna is advised to have a three-way phone therapy session with her, Roxanne, and Brittany. Brianna is shocked because previous calls with her mom seemed like everything was going well, but it was all a front. Now she realizes her and Brittany realizes. Brittany joins at the house and says that she does not trust Roxanne. She calls her a liar. And Brittany says that she wants a stress-free life and thinks that her mom will not be honest in therapy. So although they decided they didn't want that meeting or that therapy session to be on camera, we do hear the end part of what Brittany is saying to Roxanne. I don't give a what you say, Roxanne, because at the end of the day, you have never been a good parent. You're just selfish, mom. So now Brittany is talking to Vicky, the producer, and she says that she pretty much told Roxanne off. Brianna says that Brittany went off on their mom and Roxanne was saying mean things back. And Brianna describes it as a toxic triangle that they have going on and she wants it to stop. And she feels like the only adult trying to resolve problems, even though everybody wants to get along. So Macy tells Taylor that the lunch with Amanda went well and that Amanda is very easy to talk to. She mentions that Amanda and Ryan know that they're both supposed to be in for a year before starting a relationship. But at this point, it's already been nine months. And so what the heck are they going to do about it? You know what I mean? Taylor asks if Macy's nervous about how long they've been together, you know, suggesting that now they have to worry about Amanda as well as Ryan. Okay. Macy admits that it does worry her, but she's not going to let that control her or make her anxious. She feels good about where Bentley is in the situation right now, and she sees Amanda as a positive influence on Ryan. However, Macy's concerned about how Ryan's Tyler and Nova return from the dance where they had a great time. Tyler says in confessional that Nova is an awesome kid. Nova tells Tyler he's an amazing dad. And guys, this warmed my mother freaking heart, how grateful she is um, to have her dad in her life. And they end the show off with a hug. And that is the end of this recap. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.